systems. First of all, actually, there, there are uh, numerous systems with inherently time periodic dynamics. They are naturally time periodic. Many, many, many biological systems. Birds and insects are one set. They flap their wings continuously to generate lift force and to move through the the surrounding air. The heart dynamics is time periodic. We have fish locomotion, cetaceans. All these systems are time periodic systems. We also have engineering systems. We have helicopters, we have time periodic. We have wind turbines. We have the bio inspired version of these guys. When we build the flapping wing micro air vehicles that fly like insects, they are the same or similar. We build the bio inspired underwater vehicles. So there are many, many systems that are naturally time periodic. And actually sometimes even if the system is not time periodic, it's just a time invariant. There's no explicit time dependence in the system. Sometimes we intentionally induce, intentionally induce periodicity to get some of its benefits. Like what? What are the benefits that are expected if you induce periodicity? Well, the very first thing is vibrational stabilization. If you have an unstable system, you may just vibrate it back and forth, open loop, there is no feedback, and you get uh, stabilization. This is the video that I showed in the very first lecture, and uh, we show we show it in every single meeting in our group, even if it's relevant or not. So, uh, inverted pendulum, it's unstable, you leave it, it falls down. If you vibrate it up and down, constant amplitude, constant frequency, there is no feedback. It becomes stable, very robustly stable. And you can see it's as, as if you have a spring here. It's exactly it behaves like a, a spring action, and there is no spring. The point is, like I said before, I can always stabilize the interdependence, a very famous problem of control theory, right? But uh, this needs feedback, of course. I need to have uh, a sensor to measure the angle theta and something here to move according to the measured theta. And your control law, as a control engineer, your job is to design the control law, the map between the measurement and the required control action. But here there is no feedback. I don't need the sensor, I don't need anything. You just fire and forget, like they say. So uh, this is a well-known concept in, uh, in time to this temporary dynamics, vibration stabilization. Okay, I just showed you the, the video. There's another concept uh, that is very related, it's the high frequency periodic control of under-actuated systems. So systems that don't have enough actuators there is no dedicated actuator to each degree of freedom, so you have lack of actuators, and yet with this high frequency oscillatory control of the available actuators, you may be able to generate forces and moments in the other directions over which you don't have direct control authority. I mean, the obvious example is insects, they move their wings back and forth and they generate upward force. 
the cetaceans, they plunge their tails, right? The whales, cetaceans, they plunge their tails in the water up and, up and down, and they propel themselves forward. Also the fish, some of the fishes, they, they propel uh, sideways, they move their tails sideways, and they propel themselves forward. So uh, this is related actually to symmetry breaking. sometimes intentionally make our system time varying in particular time periodic although it may be uh, intrinsically time invariant so these are the benefits that we may get one more benefit is to add or induce extra inputs these inputs are virtual inputs what do you mean by that Let, let's have a simple example so Let's, let's say we have a system with this form, x dot equals some function of x. And you have your control here, say some 5t, some sigma, plus g of x, phi dot of t. So phi dot is your control. And you will assume it to be something cosine omega t. Cosine omega t. Well, omega is too fast. Okay? Too fast in the sense that uh, your system will not feel this very high frequency. It will just feel the average of it. And we'll, we'll, you know, we will uh, make this very rigorous today and next lecture. So you're oscillating too fast. The system doesn't catch your oscillation. It just feels the average effect of it. So when you average this guy, x bar indicates an averaging quantity, so this is f bar when you average this function. Now you don't see the time variation of phi anymore because you already integrated over time, time disappears. And you still see the parameters, phi and omega. So uh, at the beginning you had one control signal, you, one input to your system, single input. Now the average of dynamics has two inputs, phi and omega, because you can manipulate them independently. Well, I have one signal, so I can oscillate. This is over a very fast time scale. The system doesn't feel this oscillation, but feels the average or the net effect of it. Okay. And nothing can prevent me from doing the following. I can oscillate here with some amplitude and frequency, and in the very next cycle, I can change the amplitude and frequency. So this amplitude and frequency can change over the slow time scale. So over the slow time scale, which is this system, the average dynamics, these guys are time varying. So they can be treated as inputs. I started with a single input. Now I have two, and may, you may be, you know, maybe have more parameters here. Instead of only amplitude and frequency, you can have phase shift, you can have smoothness, some control parameters to control the smoothness of the waveform or whatever. So in general, you may start with the system on this form, x dot equals f of x, and you, your input lives in Rm, and you parameterize your u as a very fast signal, so this is omega t, and some parameters p. p lives in Rp. Obviously, P is greater than or equal to M, and sometimes it's much larger than M. So the average dynamics is just some function. This was a function of time. Now, when you average, the time disappears, and you get this P instead. So uh, you started with M control inputs. Now you have P inputs, with P larger than 
M. These are virtual inputs. The only caveat is when we need to make the theory rigorous to accept this thing, that's, that's for analysis, people working in analysis. But for us as engineers, the, only, the main caveat is your actuator should be fast enough to move with, very, with this very high frequency that will allow this analysis to be valid. Okay? But you can create virtual inputs. And indeed, we do this in flat and flat. And some people do. Any questions about that so far? So, okay, long story short, time predict systems are great. We need to study them. Okay? So, uh, stability of time predict systems. Any questions so far, please? So, yeah. So, so we do introduce new inputs, but they don't, um, they don't provide any new control authority. Um, what do you mean? No, here they will. What, what do you mean by control authority? So the first system is indeed, say, two inputs. And say each input is parameterized by three. This system can be treated as a system of six inputs. We do that in flapping flight. So in flapping flight, we have, say, one actuator for each wing. Okay? So this is one actuator. This is another actuator. So the original system is a time-varying system, or, or actually time-invariant system, subject to two controls. We assume a waveform for u that is parameterized by amplitude, frequency, phase shift between the two, and some smoothness parameter for the waveform. You average out, due to the nature of the equations of flat and flat dynamics, now you have six inputs. Six inputs, and the system is actually six degrees of freedom. So you, you have full control authority you can generate independently forces and moments on the average dynamics. I cannot do it in a certain force. But okay, so so this can be thought of as a feedback transformation. Right? Um, no feedback because this is it's this thing is entirely open loop, right? There is no dependence on X. So here, if you want to design a control law. You design a controller for the P's to be a function of the X-box. Mm -hmm. Feedback control on the average dynamics. Right, I mean feedback transformation. Of... It's not feedback transformation. I mean, I mean control, like I, I, I change the coordinates of U into some new coordinates. You parameterized U by no parameters. Yeah. You parameterized U. So. Previously, U was just function of time. You made it function of these guys with very high frequency and it's a process, it's not just a transformation. Stability, so at the end of the day, okay, we have time periodic systems that are there in nature. Nature is indeed teeming with these systems. I want to study the stability, okay. And uh, of course, we'll st start with the linear case first, as usual. So we have x dot of t equals some a of t, a matrix that is time varying x of t. And this system, we will continue with it for a good chunk of the lecture. So it's good to give it down. As an engineer, you are so tempted to check the eigenvalues, right? And as a mathematician, you will never do that. Why? Because the eigenvalue check has never been proved for a time value case. It was just proved for a very special case where A is constant. So why ever apply it here? But we as engineers try to extend things. This is wrong, as you guys may expect. So the fact is, everybody here knows that if A is not time varying, then if all the eigenvalues of the A matrix line, the left half plane, this system is exponential. If you have time variation, the eigenvalues are not conclusive at all. And we have this interesting example by Marx, Yama Bay, 1960. x1 dot, x2 dot equals, it's a contrived example, of course, that shows this thing. It's a counter example. So this is, uh, I guess, negative 1. What is that? Yeah, negative 1, negative 1. It's a contrived example. So this is 4, negative 4. And then you add 3 cosine 8t, negative 3 cosine 8t, 
negative 3 sine 80, negative 3 sine 80. You, you may have simpler things, but uh, this is your A of T now. But this is, it is an extreme example. I'll, I'll show you why now. Because uh, if you go and compute the eigenvalues, well, this is time varying. So at each time, you will have different numbers. At each time, you will have different eigenvalues. Actually, it was contrived to give you that the eigenvalues of A are negative 1 plus or minus square root 7 J for all T. So the intuition was what? If all the eigenvalues of the A matrix lie in the left half plane for all times, we might get stability. So first of all, our eigenvalues, they don't depend on time. So this is even more encouraging. Okay? And you have here negative 1. The real part is negative 1. So it seems that the system should be stable. Yet, we have the following solution, x of t. One of the solutions is e to the 2t negative cosine 4 and sine 4. So I have a periodic term. It's bounded, cosine plus or negative 1, right? And the same for the sine. And here's the exponential thing that controls the graph or decay. You have a positive exponent. So this guy blows up. So it's an unstable solution. So never go and check the eigenvalues for the A matrix if it's time value. Okay? Any question about that? So we need a theorem. This is the topic of today. To do that, I will uh, recall some uh, concepts that you guys are familiar with from linear systems theory. So recall the concept of uh, Fundamental matrix. Let's build that. Something here. So associated with the system, our system one. Associated with one, there exists a matrix phi of t that satisfies actually the differential equation. So phi dot of t as a matrix is equal to a of t as a matrix multiplied by phi of t as a matrix for all t. And any solution any solution of the system can be written as x of t is this matrix multiplying by a constant vector. So 